are these people? We're going to talk about we're going to talk about space wars. <laughs> and he says he can hear my Discord, so therefore he's going to send something to my Discord for people to hear because because that works. It's actually Colin's Discord, sir, um, that I can hear. Um, but anyway, all right, space wars. Hold on. Two, one, cool. Um, so, you're probably wondering what that means. Um, yeah, now, thank you. Anyway, not enough war on the ground. The U.S. is taking it to space, Colin. We get to go and have war in space. Isn't that nice? Isn't that what we all wanted? Um, the military industrial complex is suiting up for a new arms race, right? This is again from Struggle of the Paps. This time over at Responsible Statecraft, right? She's putting this out through the sheer post. So, Elon Musk again, space company SpaceX, recently secured a classified contract to build an extensive network of spy satellites for an undisclosed U.S. intelligence agency, with one source telling Reuters that no one can hide under the perspective that will reach while the deal suggests the space company, which currently operates over half the active satellites orbiting Earth, has warned to warn the U.S. national security security agencies, it's not the first Washington investment in conflict for space machinery. Rather, the U.S. is funding or otherwise supporting a range of defense contractors and startups working to create a new generation of space-bound weapons, surveillance systems, and adjacent technologies. In other words, America is hell bent on a new arms race in space. In space. I'm <laughs> escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space. So, attempts to regulate weapons presence and use in space span decades, responding to an intense Cold War era arms race between the U.S. and Soviet Union, the 1967 Outer Space Treaty established that space, while free for all countries to explore and use, was limited to peaceful endeavors. Almost 60 years later, the Outer Space Treaty's vague language regarding military limitations in space, as a space policy expert, Michelle L.D. Hanlon and Greg Autry highlight, leave more than enough room for interpretation to result in conflict. Ugh. So, stonewalling subsequent international efforts to limit the militari militarization of space through the U.S. is participating in a new U.N. working group on the subject. Washington's interest in space exploration and adjacent weapons technology also goes back decades. Many may recall President Reagan's 1983 Strategic Defense <laughs> Initiative. Remember that one, right? which was established to develop land, air, and space-based missile defense systems to deter missile or nuclear weapons against the U.S., cynically referred to by critics as the Star Wars program. Many SDNI initiatives are ultimately canned due to prohibitive costs and technological limitations. And while the Pentagon established Space Command in 1985, Space Force, an entirely new branch of the military focused solely on pursuing superiority in the space domain, was launched in 2019, signaling renewed emphasis on space militarization as U.S. policy. Long-term American interest in space war tech now manifests in ambitious projects where defense companies and startups are lining up for military contracts to create a new generation of space weaponry and adjacent tech, including space vehicles, hypersonic rockets, and extensive surveillance and communication projects. For starters, Space Force's Space Development Agency recently granted defense contractors L3 Harris and Lockheed Martin and space company Sierra Space contracts worth $2.5 billion to build satellites for the U.S. military's proliferated warfighter space architecture. A constellation of hundreds of satellites built out on tranches that provide various warfighting capabilities, including the collection and transmission of critical wartime communications into low Earth orbit. The PWSA will serve as the backbone of the Pentagon's Joint All Domain Command and Control Project, an effort to bolster warfighting capacities and decision making process 
by facilitating information advantage at the speed of relevance. Other efforts are just as sci-fi-esque, zoning in on hypersonic weapon systems and parts, for example, RTX, formerly Raytheon, and north of Grumman have collaborated to secure a DARPA contract for a hypersonic air breathing weapons concept. Colin, why that thing need to breathe air? You riddle me that. <clears throat> like, I don't need no hypersonic nothing air breathing. I'm just saying. So, where scramjet-powered missiles can travel at hypersonic speeds for offensive purposes. And aerospace startup True Anomaly, which is funded by military officers and receives funding from the U.S. Space Force to the tune of over $17 million, is developing space we weapons and adjacent conflict for tools. An example is True Anomaly's Jackal Autonomous Orbit Vehicle an imaging satellite able to take on, according to True Anomaly CEO Evan Rogers, rendezvous and proximity operations missions with uncooperative targets. As True Anomaly finds fiscal success, accruing over $100 million in December, Series B fundraising round from venture capitalists, including Eclipse Ventures and Acme Capital, other aerospace startups are funding the market with the assistance of the U.S. government, both in funding and other critical partnerships. Take out Firehawk Aerospace, which wants to create the rocket system of the future to enable the next generation of aerospace and defenses. Partnered with NASA in 2021 to test rocket engine at NASA's in a Space Center in Mississippi, it recently secured Army Applications Laboratory, Buford U.S. Air Force Small Business, Innovation Research Award to advance developments in its rocket motors and engines. Data and satellite focused American space tech company Capella Space, a contractor for federal agencies, including the Air and Space Forces, specializes in reconnaissance, powerful surveillance tools, including geospatial intelligence and synthetic aperture radar, monitoring to help national security officials identify a myriad of security risks in early 2023. Capella Space even formed a subsidiary, Capella Federal, to provide federal clients with additional access to synthetic aperture radar imaging services. The funding of expensive future space surveillance and weapon projects indicates the U.S.'s eagerness to maintain superiority. For military personnel, positive such advancements are critical within the context of both a space race and an increasingly tumultuous geopolitical climate. It's not the possibility of war in space outright. As Space Force General Chase Saltzman declared at the recent Mitchell Institute Space Power Security Forum, if we do not have space, we lose testifying before the Senate Armed Services Committee in late February. Space Force General Stephen N. Biden explained the U.S. Space Command must alter its military capacities through increased personnel training and investments in relevant technologies that the U.S. is ready if deterrence <coughs> while well, upping its own military capacities, however, Washington is simultaneously pushing against other countries anti-satellite weapons testing and capa uh, capability the U.S. already has. What's more, the U.S. recently accused Russia of developing possibly nuclear anti-satellite weaponry in violation of the Outer Space Treaty. But the accusations, which Russia denies, are vague, and as Todd Harrison of the Center for Strategic Budgetary Assessments and Clayton Swope for the Center for Strategic and International Study posit Russia's use of such a weapon seems unlikely as it is effectively a kamikaze attack and would likely take out many of Russia's own satellites will promptly lead to retaliation from adversaries. In any case, such pointing fingers when coupled with ongoing space deterrence and weapon proliferation efforts does little to advance genuine diplomacy, where states could instead discuss on equal terms how space should be used and shared amongst nations. Ultimately, weapons and aerospace company efforts have launched a new generation of weaponry and adjacent tech, buoyed by consistent support from the deterrence-focused U.S. As a result, the military-industrial complex has further, further expanded it to the domain of space, where defense companies have new opportunities to score lucrative weapon contracts and theoretically even push for more conflict. Thoughts, Care Bear.
Ugh. My in uh, space. room on the Earth, so. Yep. To get in space. Yay! But... Space! Fun. <laughs> so, yeah, space nukes, space, just the worst sci fi terror Armageddon imaginable. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my story. So, you know, hope people learn some stuff. Um, you know, you can always choose to support us over at codashv.com slash indie news networks in the QR code on the screen or put exclamation mark donate in chat. You can super chat with us. Um, or you can just like and subscribe. Very easy. Make sure to leave a comment, you know, tell us what you think. Tell us what you think will happen. Help us get to do K. What, what are we at now, K Bear? Mm. Uh, we gain any? With, we still at 1898. Cool. 1898. Two people. You got to get two people to go sub. That's.